For numerous NBA players, their journey to the league is often a difficult one full of obstacles, struggles, and controversies. Some of those challenges are predictable, especially during a player's college years as they run the risk of injury, having their draft stock drop due to limited minutes and off-court temptations. Brandon Davies was one player who had a difficult journey to get to the NBA. After being left unselected for the 2013 draft, Davies signed with the Clippers for that year's summer league roster in September. He was eventually waived the next month, though he then signed with the 76ers. He played sparingly for Philadelphia before being traded to the Nets in December 2014. Davies remained in Brooklyn for a month before he was waived by the team, effectively ending his NBA career as he then played internationally, representing a variety of teams. Looking for overtime here, Higgins inside, blocked by Dante Hall, but put in by Brandon Davies. Ultimately, Davies' NBA career was nothing special, but it's impressive that he even had one, as it was always a strong chance that it would never even happen at all, thanks in large part due to an unusual controversy during his college career. After being adopted, Davies was raised in Utah, where he established himself as one of the state's best basketball players during his high school years. From 2009 to 2013, Davies represented BYU. His first season with the Cougars was underwhelming, but then, for the 10-11 season, he became a key player for the team as he served as a solid inside force to complement the team's outside sharpshooter, Jimmer Fredette. We're tied at 56! Fredette shooting that one from Provo! Thanks in large part to Davies, BYU opened the season 27-2. Then, just before the 2011 NCAA tournament, Davies was suspended from the team for violating BYU's terms and conditions for students because the university adheres to the church educational system, otherwise known as the CES Honor Code, which involves standards set by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that students and faculty attending a school owned and operated by the church are required to live by. Under the code, students are expected to be honest, abstain from drugs such as alcohol, tobacco, and even caffeine, while also attending church regularly. Additionally, the code requires students to refrain from premarital sex, which is where Davis got himself in trouble. For a number of basketball fans, this was the first time they had ever heard of BYU's code, and they were both baffled and impressed that the university could even manage to attract athletes to the school in the first place, given that a scholarship from the university contradicts the number one reason that many people have for going to college at all. But, for Davies, attending BYU had been a specific choice as he had had other offers from the University of California, the University of Utah, and Gonzaga. Yet, even though going to the University of Utah would have let Davies stay close to family and friends, he went with BYU due to his Mormon faith. Although BYU officials were quick to acknowledge that Davies' suspension didn't involve anything criminal, his dismissal still jeopardized his future as the university launched a full-scale investigation to determine if his dismissal should be permanent. Ultimately, the investigation found that Davies' partner in crime was fellow Utah native volleyball player Danica Mendeville, though she attended Arizona State University, who didn't have the CES honor code. In the end, without Davies, the Cougars made it to the Sweet 16 in the 2011 NCAA tournament before being eliminated. The brilliant career of Jimmer Fredette over at BYU, Florida, defeated BYU. Later, in August 2011, Davies was reinstated with the Cougars. Although his remaining years with BYU were personally successful, the team failed to replicate the success of their 10-11 season. While Davies managed to put his suspension behind him and have a long professional career that, as of March 2024, is still flourishing, the incident did raise awareness and debate around BYU's expectations in regards to student behavior. Every university has an honor code, but few are as strange and extreme as BYU's given that most schools are at least okay with students drinking coffee. Still, college athletics is a multi-billion dollar industry which leads most universities to generally look the other way when it comes to players misbehaving. So, there was a lot of respect for BYU to effectively forfeit their best chance at a successful run at the Final Four, including the millions of dollars generated from television revenue over their values. Of course, in theory, the purpose of BYU's honor code is to ensure that, when their students graduate, they're well-rounded individuals who contribute nothing but good things to the world. In reality, the effectiveness of the code is highly questionable, especially when you factor in some of the people who are a direct result of it, such as former NBA player and current NBA executive Danny Ainge. He'd attended BYU from 1977 to 1981 and publicly celebrated the university for the unique draconian rules and punishments against Davies, even though Ainge himself was never known to conduct himself as virtuously as BYU expect their teenage athletes on scholarships to. This game is going to wind down to a whimper for Phoenix. Elijah Wan putting the cherry on the Sunday. 118 to oh 102. Did Ainge do that on purpose? He just fired the ball in the back of Ellie's head. It looks intentional. We cannot read the mind of Danny Ainge, but there was the Houston celebration.